Okay, let's go on down. Uh, uh, so that's done, and I think that we're ready to move on to what what to animation, and start beginning to understand the whole concept of threading. Okay, so threading is something that you probably hear all the time, and wondering what what is that? You know, and it's actually a very pretty easy concept, something we use all the time. So if you're going to do animation, you're going to need to use threading. And here is one of the problems with Adobe Flash right now. Most animation systems run on multi-threading. And that is when your computer can do more than one thing at once. But Flash only has one thread. So it doesn't have the ability to multi-thread, which really makes its animation somewhat inefficient. So uh, it's now coming along with a new API that can run on your... Uh, that can actually use your hardware system, so I assume it has multi-threading in involved. So I think everyone's going to be pretty surprised with what comes along with the new Flash Mohill. We're all excited about it. But what is a thread, for example? We got that big question because if you're going to do animation, you need to understand threads. And so basically, what it is is uh, if you have a simple computer program like many we've been running, you do an operation, and computer waits for you to do something else. And so it's kind of a linear process. But what a thread allows your computer to do is more than one thing at once. So, for example, you may be sitting at your computer and using a print job, right? And then you start doing something else. You would not want to send a print job and wait for it to print before you could do anything else on your computer. So the whole fact that you can do more than one thing at a time on your computer is that it's multi-threading. Okay, you have many different operations working at once. Now, there's other ways to do this, and it can be even more complex than this, but it's a simple way of thinking about it. Now, the way you multi-thread uh, in Java is you use a term called runnable. All right? And runnable actually has some methods in it, like a start method and a run method, that allows you, in a sense, to actually do all types of wonderful things. Now, we're going to come across a whole bunch of different concepts right away that's going to hit us really hard. And uh, one is going to be exception handling, okay? So Bucky has a nice little video on exception handling. He does a really good job on it. So make sure you watch that video on exceptional handling. Basic exception handling has what's called a try catch statement in it. And the try statement is what is done first. And if it doesn't work, if there's an error, then it pops over, over to a catch statement. You must learn to use try catch statements. And I'll tell you why. Absolutely, and you'll see some today. And he handles it in this video in exception handling. That's video 82, by the way. So if you're kind of wondering where we were with Bucky, it was 82, because polymorphism goes to the 50s, and then he handles swing after that, which we've already done. And then he hits a few uh, videos out there, like exception handling. And I think 86 is his last video, so you're actually wrapped up with Bucky today. Uh, but it, uh, he's, uh, he has some great videos, so I'm glad we used them. Uh, but he does a great job on exception, exception handling, so make sure you take a look at those for me. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, we're, we can start talking about animation and threading. Okay, he doesn't treat threading. Okay, and we do. So there you have it. But uh, basically, what I'm going to want to do is just show you an animation, a simple animation, show you an iteration on that, and then show you a threaded animation. Okay. Now, uh, to I'm going to first of all show you how a threading program is created. So here's the procedures for creating a threading program. First, the class implements the runnable interface providing the run method. All right, then you can put things in the run method. Then an object of the thread class is created by passing a runnable object as an argument. So you can do that. And you'll create a thread constructor, for example. You'll construct a, th a thread. And then you'll start the method, and then uh, the method will end some way. So just go through those. And uh, let me go ahead and bring you right to the code so we can start looking at that. So if you go to the code real quick here, I've actually written uh, some code here. And I think uh, simple thread, runnable thread, simple thread is where we want to start. So what I've done here is I've created something called simple thread. And it turns out that the uh, runnable and all of this threading is native to Java. Okay, So it's in the, I believe, uh, import java.language folder. So you don't have to bring in any ports to get threading to work. And what I'm going to do in this particular code is I'm immediately going to create a thread. In this case, I called it th, new thread. All right. And I'm going to use system out.println. Bad on me. I should have used swing, but I just used that to make it easier. And here's my try statement right here. And here's my catch statement. Now, this is a cool program. So what it's going to do, it's going to start this iterative loop, right? And you expect, what, the for loop just to iterate through right away as fast as this can, correct? But the thread method has something called sleep. 
And what it's going to do is going to put this loop to sleep for, well, that's milliseconds. So that's 5,000 milliseconds is 5 seconds. So it's going to put this loop to sleep for 5 seconds, and then it's going to run it again, go to sleep, run again, go to sleep, run again, go to sleep. So the, re so the sleep method can actually be used in this sense as a timer for events. And then if there's an error of any, any way, it's going to hit this try. If it's an error, then it's going to populate that error down here. So it just doesn't turn my program off. And this is so important. Like I say, you may have some enterprise program out there. It may be like, uh, you know, uh, who knows, uh, a million lines of code. And then some monkey types something in that you never even thought about, and it shuts the whole thing down. You would not want that to happen. You'd want to try catch statement in there that tries it, and when the monkey types something in that you never conceived of being typed, and it shuts the whole thing down, it doesn't. It, hit, it, it, hits, it gets an error and sends it to the catch statement, and your program keeps running. So you hit try, catch, and then the code below it starts running. Okay? So very important mechanism. Specifically, you're going to come to a point sometimes where you just can't figure out a bug. Just every once in a while, when something's typed that some you'd never conceived, you get a bug. We'll just put a try statement, try catch in there because it probably won't be typed very many times. All right, that's one way of handling errors, and it's, it's very popular. Everyone uses it. So let's run the code and watch it work. And I'm going to break one of my promises. I said I'd never use a console again, but here I am using console again. There's my console. And every five seconds, it's printing out a new number. You see that? Welcome to threading. And so while it's asleep, you can do something else, right? Or you can do something while it's, using, while it's threading. You could have multiple threads running. All right, now we're not going to do a whole lot of that. We're going to hop right into animation right away and start talking about how that works. So let's go right to the write-up on animation and uh, start talking about it. Animation is really what makes the web go around. I mean, that's why Flash is so popular, because it found an easy way to animate. Now it's extremely complicated to do Flash reprogramming, but uh, everyone, there's such a large user community, everyone's edu educated in it. Uh, and uh, if Flash was to introduce its program today with no user base, everyone would laugh and never use it. <laughs> it's really uh, fairly sophisticated now. But uh, we're going to talk about animation. All animation is really doing is, in this sense, is putting an image after an image, after an image, after an image. So it puts an image, clears the screen, puts an image, clears the screen, puts an image, clears the screen, and it's just moving it along. Kind of a simple concept of animation. It can be more complex than that, but uh, in this particular case, that's what it does. And so what you're going to see once again, Porter, is that you're going to create uh, your little game board. Well, first you're going to create your little animated game board here, right? And you're going to call it into your, uh, in a sense, the class that runs it. And so this is the class that runs it. We're going to call that star because we're going to animate a star. Okay. And then we're going to actually um, come down here. And here's the star. And what we're going to call right here is we're going to implement the action listener, which is basically is going to get our get us get our iteration iterating loop going. We're going to create a Java a swing timer, excuse me. And it turns out the swing timer does not is not as ac accurate as the Java timer, and so in the next code we use the Java timer instead. And uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to declare our image as we did in the last time. We're going to start the timer up, and we're going to start with initial x and y. Calling and it's creating those variables. We're strict typing everything right now, and then in the next statement, we're going to have our background set, and we're going to grab our image icon. And right now, our image icon is a star ping. Are you familiar with ping files? Ping files have transparency. Do you know how to generate those in Photoshop? Do you mind if I run you through the process? I'm going to walk you through the process. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I, I need a star uh, so I can animate it. So I'm actually going to grab one from the web. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the web and just type in uh, star for my uh, um, a particular image search. So I'm going to come here and hit star, S-T-A-R. Hit images and let's find some stars. Because what I'm going to want to do with my, well, <laughs> who knows what happens to come up when you type things into the web. Got to be careful here.